Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I'm the person behind Happy Puppy Truffles. Today I wanted to share with you guys a fun project to make your own shikishi or design board to help celebrate uh, Kids Day or Kodomonohi in Japan. Now this uh, used to be kind of referred to as Boys Day, but it's kind of expanded into just being for everybody really. And uh, when you make one of these uh, board designs here, you can use really cardboard or map board or anything you might have lying around. We usually use this board that's usually got a nice little fleck a speckled back to it and a gold uh, frame and then it's usually white and what I've done is put some blue um, handmade paper on top to kind of look like the sky and then I'm going to have my uh, koi nobori or the little koi wind socks that we put out to celebrate for kids day kind of across this in a fun way so um, I've already kind of prepped the basics for this but we're just going to use the traditional koi uh, origami because that also looks really pretty realistic to the way that the wind socks look they have a really pretty painted uh, koi on each of them and I'm gonna make three typically the uh, displays have three um, the first one is usually black and that's to represent the father of the household and then the next one's usually uh, red or pink and that's to represent the mother and then uh, the next one is usually blue or green and uh, that represents the um, you know, oldest son in the family. But uh, some people add extras then for everybody, all the boys, all the girls. Kind of just depends on your preference. But uh, this one's going to be, we're going to make a black one and I have, a, have the red one and the blue one. And um, just to kind of go down in size, you know, you want to have, I'm doing one that's 15 by 15 centimeters, 14 by 14 centimeters, and 13 by 13 centimeters. And that way you get that kind of just slight you know, change in size for each one of those. And uh, then you just need a little bit of extra paper to serve as the uh, post that everything is tied to. Um, sometimes here in Japan we use bamboo. That's a traditional way of kind of hanging it if you can find some bamboo lying around. Um, but yeah, so I thought I'd just refresh your guys' memory of how to make one of the traditional carp. These are the ones that I've already made. This is the red one and the blue one. And so you can kind of get a feel for how things will look. And then I had this nice black paper here that uh, I used. And I tried to pick papers that kind of had a, a pattern to them that kind of reminded me of, of the fish scales. Um, and you can certainly, you know, have a lot of fun with this. And I'm going to be doing a printable that actually represents more true to the way that we do things here in Japan with the stylized kind of way of making these uh, wind socks. But for the time being, with origami paper, you can have a lot of fun with it too. So these are both, you know, some handmade papers, some chiogamis that I had. Um, so when you make the uh, carp, and if you want to watch the other tutorial for it too, that's fine too. But it's a really easy, fun origami. It's a great way to do things with kids and beginners because the folds are not too difficult, but they do teach you some really good basics. What we want to start off with, with is with the color side facing down, fold your paper in half into a big triangle. And we want to do that both ways. And then open it up. I'm going to take this bottom right edge and fold it up towards that crease I just made. It helps to kind of start it down at the bottom, hold it there, get this next side, and then just crease it out. So keeping that lined edge even with the center, you get a nice little fold like this. And then I'm going to do the other side too. Sometimes it helps to turn your paper around. You don't have to keep it stationary on the paper. You know, Make it move so that it's easier for you to fold. So you get something like this. Flip it over and take the bottom part and fold it straight up to the top. Should be pretty easy, there's already a crease there. So flip it back over and we've got these nice little pockets here. What I'm gonna do is open them up and there's already a crease started here so this should be pretty easy. When you open them up and push them down, this little flap should come together really easily. Now you wanna smooth the rest of this out right along the center crease that you can still see. Try to get as nice of a point as you can up there. and Make a good crease on the edge and then do the same thing over here too. So we're just smushing everything down and sometimes with this you know, fancier paper you do want to make sure you take a time to get a nice clean crease from that so that you don't wind up getting things pulling in the wrong way. Now you should have these little flaps open down here at the bottom. I'm going to take the back layer and just bring it around so that we wind up getting something that looks like this. And I just want these little guys to lay flat so make sure everything kind of creases down to be flat. With those little guys pointing down, flip things over for a second. Take the top part and fold straight down to the center. And then fold everything in half. 
and just, just take care down over here that you get a good little crease. You can see how we're getting something that looks like a fish here. We've got the head, that nice little sort of boxy face that we need for that. And then we've got the little fins here. So I'm just going to go ahead and take and make sure that this crease can go both, both, both forward and back. And with it going forward, what I want to do here is I'm going to take it and take this edge, and you can just kind of find a spot that's good about a centimeter or so from the point, and take this part and bring it right to, and I know it's hard with the black paper, but there's a crease right here. You want to bring it down to that. So you're just bringing this at an angle so that you get just a tiny little bit of fin sticking down underneath. Flip it over, and you could do this next step even easier because we've already got the uh, beginning part completed here. Let me make sure my thing is straight. There we go. It kind of shifted on me. You can just kind of match up to the other fin uh, rather than really doing anything else, and you should get things to line up there equally. And then with the tail, if you hold the body and the head kind of in your right hand and open up the left side here, you can do a reverse crease by pushing up here and getting that part that's right now a valley, get that to become a mountain and kind of pinch on it a little bit. And then you can kind of adjust and play around with, you know, how far up this goes. You can change that. You just want a little bit of tail. You don't want a lot. Because um, really, these windsocks, they're straight. So if you prefer, you can even leave this just long and straight, too. That's just a point of preference. I'm going to fold it all the way like traditional ways of the traditional koi, uh, just to get that to kind of come all the way up like so. And that gives me then my dad, my mom, and my little junior dude here hanging out. So <laughs> um, once you guys get all those made, you might find it's good to kind of put a little bit of glue in the middle of these just because when we do this and we lay it flat, you'll notice this is not, you know, um, going to stay together very good because everything kind of has a tendency of kind of popping open. So I'll put a little bit of glue on that and maybe, you know, slide it underneath something that's uh, hard or uh, that's heavy for a little while to make sure it stays down. Or, you know, just kind of keep your fingers crossed so it doesn't pop open when you're working on it. I don't have a lot of time to get this to stick, so we might have some trouble with these guys popping out. We'll see what happens. Get these guys both. Just with a bit of glue. And then I have my board with that blue on it now. And what I did is I took a little bit of some paper, some more handmade paper that I had that was in a nice little kind of goldish yellow color. And, and you can kind of play around with which way you want to do things. I, I'm going to kind of shoot for something that goes like this. And I have a little round bit too here to kind of serve as the top part. You want to make sure before you glue this down that you've got your, your guy here. Because you want to give yourself enough room. You don't want his tail sticking off the edge here. So I'm just going to kind of, you know, make sure that the angle that I'm doing this at is good here so that I have room for all three of these guys here. So I can find a good spacing for that. And then uh, once I kind of know what that is, I've got this part kind of long here and I want to try, let's see here, maybe I'll just try to simplify this so that I only have to make one edged cut if I can get this to kind of fold over. I don't even know, this might not be in my camera view here. But I've just edged, brought that edge over here so that I can cut my paper off. So that that will match up against the side. And then I'll just put a little bit of tape glue on the other side here. And you want to try to keep things as straight as you can, of course. And then I'll put a little bit here on the top, too, for this ball.
Now sometimes these uh, little wind socks have another rainbow wind sock right at top. I'm just going to kind of focus on it being something like this just to kind of create this is sort of more of an abstract sort of looking one here but then I'll just put glue on the back of my carp. Of course these things blow every which way in the wind so it's really not that important you know uh, if it goes to the right or the left but I'd say when you look in a you know search online for clip art for uh, you know koi wind socks like this they're almost always facing this way so you might want to kind of keep it that way if that's something you wanted to kind of follow. <laughs> but in the end, you should get something that kind of looks like this. A nice little family here. <laughs> And then if you wanted to, if you have like a sign or something that you use, I'm, I've got my little damper thingy here. I can put my name on. But that should give you sort of a finished kind of fun way to display the traditional koi. Uh, you can also of course do a more, you know, aquatic theme if you wanted to but or I guess I don't you don't use that word when they live in the river I don't know how that works I should look into that and see <laughs> that the, yeah I mean it's and uh, still water that doesn't just refer to ocean but anyways there you go that's your koi no bori kind of you know, uh, carp display just sort of an abstract version of this I will be having a more realistic project that you can do with my printables and a straw and some string to make your very own so look for that too and um, um, you know, just have a couple fun projects to share with you guys for Kids Day before we then go back to kind of focusing on things for Mother's Day, too. So thanks again always so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.